everybody. Uh, my name's Jeff. And I'm holding a microphone. Um, this, our presentation is called You Never Get a Second Chance to Make 141,202 first, Good First Impressions. Right? Good First Impressions. And uh, I've got two people who are going to be driving this thing. I'm essentially going to make fart sounds and pass the microphone back and forth while Jason Logue and Kat Spector um, make good points and share insights about managing your online identity, the various personas that may grow out from that, and legal liabilities and other snafus associated therewith. So um, for those of you who don't know us, and I, I'm going to assume that's pretty much everybody, Kat, would you stand up? I'll introduce you guys. Hi. Kat Spector. Um, has the microphone now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm the, sorry, that's so bright. Wow. Uh, I'm Kat. I write Cat's Call in the Post Gazette. I don't know if anyone's ever seen, read it. But, Woo! Uh, hi. Uh, oh, hey, woo! Uh, any, <laughs> anyway, I'm the advice columnist for the Post Gazette. And uh, among other writing, that's how I'm basically known in Pittsburgh. So what I'm going to talk about today is how to maintain your identity online when you're online for social purposes, primarily social purposes. And I'm going to focus on the world of online dating. So keep that in your mind because I have a couple questions for all of you that I expect you to answer honestly. No, I'm going to ask you to answer them honestly, though I expect you to lie. Um, so anyway, this is Jason Lowe. He can uh, let you know who he is. He's going to keep this up. Hi, I'm Jason Lowe. I tweet as a cranberry person. And I, <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks. I mean, love you all. Um, I haven't missed a Steeler game. I wrote this down so I wouldn't forget. The last Steeler game I didn't watch live was December 16th, 2000. And I tell you, I, I, it, it was a Saturday. It was the last. I need the mic. Yeah, it was the last game of Three Rivers. And I just like, forgot it was Saturday. So my wife made plans. And we got through it. <laughs> uh, I uh, am an attorney at a law firm downtown uh, called Dickie McKinney Chilcote, um, and I am not, I, I don't tweet about that, and that's going to be some kind of, you know, it's going to kind of go with our theme, uh, you know, there's various reasons for that. Uh, you, know. you send a lot of intimidating letters to people. Right, yeah, and, you know, my, if anyone follows my Twitter, it's, it's all just jokes, it's all just you know, pudgy guy in the suburbs like falls down a lot, and you know, it's, it's it's that kind of stuff. And the work part of my life is kind of missing uh, from the Twitter, and that's you know, it's a deliberate choice. Uh, but I'm going to talk about some of the legalities, uh, you know, maybe some things that people don't think about, uh, you know, when they when they post to their Facebook or when they post on uh, Twitter, uh, or you know, more likely it's probably stuff that people do think about, but they haven't necessarily thought about you know, who, who's watching. Uh, and, you know, we, we've talked a lot uh, in preparing for this. You know, the last thing we want to do is, uh, you know, we're not going to be up here telling horror stories like, you know, you're going to get sued for this, you're going to get fired for that. Uh, you you're know. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't want to scare anybody off, you know, off the internet, uh, as if we could accomplish that anyway. Except, okay, uh, a few people. Except yeah, right, except, you know, Justin, I mean, 14,000, whoo, but so here's my, my notes are called, you know, I'm going to talk about the law a little bit, and it's going to relate back to, you know, authenticity, openness, uh, honesty, and how that can all, uh, you know, fit with, you know, with my, with my parts with the legal aspect. Can we go back to Jeff? Thanks. I mean, I don't know if I should do an introduction, but my name is Jeff, and I'm an information architect at a place here in town. We build websites, and I use Twitter sometimes at a text burger. And, um, and uh, I'm going to talk about um, making jokes all the time and uh, how that may or may not intersect with your professional obligations and your job roles and uh, your neighbors, the PTA, uh, babysitter population, uh, girlfriend, ex-wife, <laughs> to name just a few uh, population areas. So um, I think, you know, in our, in our slide presentation, in our little presentation, we have a really animated PowerPoint here today. It's, it's a keynote, so there are a lot of effects, a lot of special effects. Um, and I don't want to get to the special effects too soon, because they're meant to distract you when we've run out of substance. So 
<laughs> Instead of getting to those right off the bat, um, I think first we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about whether or not you should worry about your boss or a prospective employer finding you online. So, like a couple of questions, sort of show of hands. How many people here um, use uh, like Facebook? Fa Facebook. Do you have that? Everybody. I mean, like a lot of people I know use that, and they think it's email with pictures. Right? They think that's email. People don't send regular email anymore. They send Facebook messages. What about Twitter? Is everybody on that? Jeff, what is Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to figure this Twitter thing out. So. Um, and then, how many of you have two separate Twitter accounts? I mean, who has like one for work and one for home, or like uh, a couple of people? Why? Just to shout out, like, what are the concerns that drive you to maintain two of these things? Because God, I can only stay on top of one and barely. The work one has to get carried on, and why do that job? You can't change the so you're manning the guns for an organization. Yeah. yeah okay. That's basically what I'm doing. Same, same. People who are following me don't care about our software's release schedule. People who care about our software's release schedule really probably don't care that I'm here with you guys. But we care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of stunned and hurt, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so there's some legitimate reasons to have some second accounts here. Who, uh, who is in a job that puts them out there sort of front and center in the world and they just keep one account. Like I've got one Twitter account, I talk about my work stuff, I talk about my dog poop, I talk about everything sort of in one, okay, maybe not, cat, I don't know. But, you know, who's in that situation? You nervous much? <laughs> Anybody had been, been confronted by a boss or a colleague about something that you said online? Yeah, oh, these are good. Anybody wanna come up and grab the microphone and talk about it for a second? Should I? Run this back. What was the confrontation, if you don't mind sharing? Well, my, my boss also happens to be my sister, and so she has made complaints about <laughs> work stuff and family stuff that I have to use. Uh, but she does that about me just saying it to anyone in the room. Okay, so you're like the Osmonds. You're just online. <laughs> <laughs> Short, some ancient. Who else? Uh, John, did you say you've, been, you've had a confrontation? Yeah, I'm not a good example. You guys, do you live in the same neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> just, I like realism. Just, just move them on every now and then. It's <laughs> a big deal. Okay. Well, I mean, I want to I pass yeah. this off because I know you have the yeah. most to talk about here. And I think maybe there's a little video. We prepared a couple of vignettes, video. right? This is not the distraction effect here. This is content. Oh, wait, 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 uh, Jeff, uh, you know, you gave a good interview, uh, everyone liked you, uh, good resume, uh, however, after the interview, uh, we looked at your Facebook page and noticed that you posted that you just got interviewed by a bunch of jerks. So, clearly we don't think it's going to be the right fit for you, Jeff. Uh, have a nice day. Let's switch places. And I'll yeah. just say, you know, this is based entirely around something that happened about a month ago. Yeah, this was a, a story that, that Jeff related. Um, and, you know, tell me if I'm telling this wrong, but you know, basically he interviewed uh, a person and it really happened. That, uh, they said, oh, you know, Jeff's company was, you know, I don't know, uptight and stuff or something or other. I mean, you, you, you see Jeff. I mean, you know, said something about Jeff, and uh, so yeah, he didn't he didn't get the job offer. I mean, there was no confrontation like that, but you know, we took a little uh, creative license. Uh, 
you know, there's some, some case studies out there. Uh, obviously, uh, in, in Pittsburgh, uh, I'm sure a lot of you here were, were here for uh, Ginny yesterday for Pit Girl. Mike is in the, in the back. Uh, you know, lost her job over her blog. Uh, I mean, in a nutshell. I mean, you know, the, the presentation was 45 minutes yesterday and, you know, could have been two hours. But, you know, in a nutshell, you know, she had a blog and, you know, blog, uh, you know, basically caused her to lose her job. Heather Armstrong, of course, is another famous example. Uh, I don't know if there has been a lot of, you know, legal fighting over this. And I think the reason is because it is because most employment relationships are at will. Uh, you know, can I get fired? Can I get fired for something that I post on Twitter or post on Facebook? I mean, yeah, uh, you can get fired for about anything. Uh, if you, you know, if you are tweeting about, oh, this customer is such a pain in the ass, uh, and you know, you're a company that values customer relations, yeah, I mean, you can, you can certainly get fired for that. Uh, and how does this relate, of course, to authenticity? So it's not just you know, uh, you know, shut up and you know, don't tweet about anything. Uh, you know what you what Jeff did. I mean, what his problem was there. It wasn't a problem that you know, he felt like, you know, my company was a bunch of jerks. It wasn't even that he wanted to say that. I mean, everybody after work goes out to the bar, goes home to friends or family, and says. Uh, boy, my boss was such, you know, he ride me so hard today. Uh, and you, you say that, and then it's gone. You post it on Facebook, anyone can read that, uh, and it's, it's eternal. Uh, you know, you can have some levels of protection with protected updates, but, you know, the stuff is out there. And so, I mean, I think the thing is, you know, the authenticity. Obviously, Jeff wasn't going to say that to someone's face in the interview. Uh, and so to post something you know, rude, insulting, uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise said, and that's where it comes into you know, an authenticity problem. I'm putting, I'm putting up the facts, okay? We already dealt with the myth. I, I'm just throwing <laughs> up the facts while you talk here, except for... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I hope that everybody knows that on the, on the internet, nobody knows who you really are. Pro prospective employers never, <laughs> never check Facebook accounts. Oh, Jeff, we're, I was reading off the thing you said you didn't want us to do Oh, that, well, but, you know, what the hell. Um, and I think, you know, it, years gone by, you know, bosses, you know, they didn't, you know, they didn't know how to Google. They didn't know there was such a thing as Facebook. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, clearly, you know, in this environment, you know, everybody knows it's out there. <laughs> right, so everybody knows about Google Amnesia? <laughs> Every 30 days, the whole internet is flushed. <laughs> you have to install this on your computer or it doesn't work. <laughs> Every 30 days. So we're in the clear. So do you want me to talk now? I mean, I'll talk now, I guess, uh, moving into other legal type issues and problems that you can, uh, that you can get into. Aside, aside from the stuff of getting fired. I have a question, Jason. Yes. I make a lot of jokes on the internet. That's that's an excellent excellent I'm question. Worried, constantly, if somebody like you is going to come make my life miserable because I made a terrible joke. Uh, let's let's do so. Let's role play something here. Let's say, you know, let's say for example, you have you, you have kids and you're getting divorced, uh, but you are like. You're like a Howard Stern level comedian online. You know, you're not a professional comedian, but you kind of fancy yourself as, hey, I'm a shock comic, and I'm going to talk about how you know my wife is, you know, this and that, and oh, my kids are driving me bananas. And so let's let's do a case study. We, let's, okay, do you want to pull up? Should we switch over because we made a little uh, we made a little account for this. Yes. Let's pull it up. Well, we got. We, you want to do it from here? We got to do the drama. Oh, okay. the drama. Okay. The drama. Okay. So. I can have you two maybe uh, go here. Where would I be? You're going to be there. Here, Kat, you're going to pretend you're typing. Pretend, because don't talk. Don't, 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 don't touch. Because that's what women in courts do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 crap, I did it again. Here I go. Now, see, I'm well, in the role play. You're already in the role. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I didn't know if I was start, supposed to start with the incendiary remarks here. I thought I was going to play. You can start with <laughs> Okay, so. I'm going to be the attorney now, and I'm going to cross-examine Jeff. And if anyone knows anything about family law, 
you know, it might not happen exactly like this, but it, you know, it, it can come up. Uh, so again, a little bit of creative license. Uh, Wait, so who gets to be the judge? You, you, right there. So Sorry. don't, the judges aren't typing. So, so <laughs> they might be on their Facebook, but they're not, they're not, yeah, it's the model. Literal snitch automatically denied outgoing internet connections from the founders of <laughs> What in the Details can be reviewed in your little snitch configuration. <laughs> Awesome. I, I, I didn't say it. Um, okay. So in our scenario, Jeff has just been examined by his own attorney. And we'll say she has pumped him up as, you know, dad of the year. They, he takes the kids to the zoo. Uh, you know, he reads to them at night. And he's a wonderful, loving parent. And then I'm going to cross-examine him and I'm going to try to, you know, score a, little, score a few points of my own. So, so Mr. Barnes, I'll... Wait, does this work? Yeah, yeah. Your own mic. Yeah. Yeah. Technology. Okay, Mr. Barnes, uh, we heard your uh, testimony, sir, uh, about what a fine, fine parent you are. Is that, is that correct? I believe you did. Yes, yeah. So you're, you're, you took the kids to the zoo? Well, yes. Yeah, a little, little trip they to the like, zoo. They liked the zoo. Yeah, you had, you had fun. Yes. Educating the, the children on, on nature and yes. zoology. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Barnes, do you do you have a Twitter account? I'm sorry, what? You have a you have a Twitter account? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me. You want to tell me what your Twitter Twitter account is? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'll <laughs> <laughs> enunciate in a minute, sir. That's. How do I get the internet on this now? You got a command tab. All right. <laughs> That'll pull up Firefox. No. I see it. No, I don't see it. <laughs> okay, now you get Apple T or Command T gets a new tab there. Be sure to show everybody my inbox. Jeez. All right. So. <laughs> Since the idea here is to score a couple points against the opposition. Now, I'm sure, you, I'm sure this is on your, you bookmarked this already for the presentation. Twitter.com. <laughs> okay, I'm there. The way, that's your replies. That's me. Oh, look. Hi. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so wait, let's go to Textburger. And, uh... That's Textburger. That's not my account. Just look on the first person he's called. Just hold on. My account is Super Awesome Dad, okay? Super, super Awesome there he Dad. Is. <laughs> super oh. Awesome Dad. So you went to the zoo, right? <laughs> that's correct. Sir, so. <laughs> so, sir, let me let me read this so so it's on the record. At the zoo, these kids are chick magnets. It's like every exhibit is the cougar cage. <laughs> so, sir, were you teaching your kids about animals, or, or were you picking up women? It's a joke. It's a joke. Okay, well, let's... It's a joke. Okay, you, uh, you guys do yard work together around the house? You, you said that you spend a lot of time together. Uh, you know, you taught them how to use the lawnmower, and it's father-son bonding with that kind of... They're my, they're my sons. Yeah, so good, good bonding, wholesome. That's an important part of living in any house. Oh, because, you know. unquestionably, sir. <laughs> is that <laughs> Ralph? There is no time for you to get shoes on. I need you to cut the grass right now. You know that's a hazard, correct? Yes, of course. It's a joke. So, explain that. Well, it, it's a joke. Oh, it's a joke. So, little Ralph losing his feet is funny. Well, well no. Are you, sir, are you a professional comedian? No. So, what is the point? It's, it's, it's just a little, okay. you know, a little, little good time. All right, so we have the Super Awesome Dad account. Let me show you this. His picture here, because I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, so that, that's you. That's the world's the world's best dad. Uh, you know, one one last one last question. You like you like taking the kids on? You said you took them on vacation. 
driving them around. Is that yes? There's the leash. <laughs> so, sir, this, the word, this, this is your account. So, my kid said the legal limit is 0 .08 BAC. So, we're talking about drunk driving with the kids in the car. So I said, let's just move to a state where it's 0 .10 and also allows a 30, 30th trimester of abortions. <laughs> That's another joke, right? Well, yeah, there are That's, not 30 that's hilarious. In pregnancy. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, no further questions. Okay, so you see where we're going with this. Uh, you know. You know what you can do is switch I don't, back I have over. no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm lost. So wait, hold on. Yeah, there. No, no, no. Nope. Go up. Oh, yeah. thank you. Oh, play. Press play. Just push play. Where's play? It's top the one left. upper left. Top left. Yeah, upper, left, there. there we go. All right. Good job. I'll go through this. All right, thanks. Too many years with a secretary, folks. <laughs> All right, so obviously I'm not going to tell people, you know, don't, don't post jokes, don't exaggerate, this and that. That, that stuff's funny. Uh, you know, if, if you're on Twitter and you follow funny people, you know, you found on Favorite or other websites that kind of collect, you know, Twitter comedy, there's going to be people that are making stuff up and it's funny. Uh, if you find yourself in a situation where you're getting divorced or there will be, you know, maybe people discussing your character. Uh, that, that's when you maybe want to think about scaling that stuff back a little bit. Or, you know, even better, uh, you know, divorces get contentious, but if this is something that you've been doing uh, and you've always been open and honest about it, uh, you know, we can get the wife back on the stand and say, you know, ma'am, you knew he had this account and you knew he was joking, right? You know, so you could, that can be rehabilitated if there's honesty and openness, uh, you know, kind of from the beginning. Uh, other things that, that people do, and some of this might not be as useful because not a lot of people are going to be involved in, you know, large personal injury cases, but we see this all the time with people that say, you know, I'm permanently disabled, I never leave the house, uh, you know, I have extra surgical scars, and so I, you know, I'm ashamed of them. I can't go to the beach. And then they'll post pictures in a bikini, uh, you know, at the beach. Or, you know, I never leave the house and they're, you know, they're doing beer bongs, uh, you know, at the pig roast. Uh, so stuff, people do this stuff all the time. And, and I know that probably everyone in here is saying, you know, duh. But before, you know, years ago, uh, if, if an attorney wanted to figure out kind of what you're up to, it cost thousands of dollars, you know, to put private investigator, tail somebody, do that kind of surveillance. Uh, maybe you'll get lucky and, you know, someone who said they have, you know, uh, you know, back injury, they never get up, you might, you might get lucky and you'll see them lifting a case of beer out of their truck. Uh, but now, anybody, you know, a paralegal who would spend a half an hour, uh, would probably generate $50 worth of billing uh, and find enough stuff to cross-examine somebody on. And a lot of times, it's not even the fact that, uh, you know, it's not even to say you're not actually injured, but it's to say, you know, you're, you're exaggerating this. What else are you exaggerating? And you're going to lose all credibility. Uh, so if you ever are in the position to sue somebody, uh, you know, I, I hope that your lawyer is telling you, just be super careful about what you're putting online. Uh, and <laughs> lawyers sometimes react to this and they say, boy, that person's lawyer should have told them not to post that stuff on Facebook. And I think, well, you know, maybe the lawyer should have told them not to lie in their complaint and say they were disabled when they weren't. So it's all that, you know, it's all the honesty just uh, yeah, Are you, you saying know. I should censor myself? Uh, you may have I to, mean, yeah. Here's a big, I think, here's a common question. Okay, I have one account, I have one Twitter account, and I make all kinds of crappy jokes about my personal life and about my office, people I work with, and uh, you know, there's 
It's, it's all mixed in there. How careful do I need to be? I mean, is, is, there, is there more than common sense I need to apply? What do you think? Well, you know, I think we finished the simulation already. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I think so, but again, it, you know, it's, it's openness. It's, Jeff, I know you and I know your bosses are, you know, they probably follow you on Twitter. They, they're aware of what you're doing. You're not doing anything uh, in secret. I mean, you know, I don't run down to the senior partner's office and say, oh, you know, look how funny my tweet was today. But I also don't, you know, hide the fact that I have a Twitter account and it's more for personal and there's, there's no work. And part of that, you know, is I don't tweet a lot of you know, profanity. Certainly don't, would never say anything about clients. Uh, so I try to keep it uh, limited to things that I would assume nobody could really get that upset over. It's just, it's funny jokes about, you know, me cutting my grass. See, now, now I, I'm in a fortunate situation because I like my job, I like the people I work with, I like the work that I do, I like the clients that I come into contact with, and so I don't frequently find myself having to make judgment calls about, oh God, should I talk about what an asshole that dude was or not? You know, I don't have to, I'm not asking myself questions like that very often. I generally can just sort of say whatever I want and not second guess it. Every now and then, uh, you know, I've had to say, no, if I say so and so about, I can't even say it in here. Every now and then, you know, you can say, I'm not going to say this because it's going to protect a client or it'll expose a client to put that out there. Um, but other than that, I don't have to do that very much. I don't think that's a, the most common position out there. I think a lot of us sort of hate our jobs, hate our families, hate our lives, hate everything <laughs> that we have to deal with 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so, what about those people? What, what kind of advice do you give them? The, the other 99%. Geez, I guess, you know, see a therapist. That's kind of negative. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not Here, sure. I'll pass the mic. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, 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 we, can, well we can all do this together. Okay, yeah. Um, hi. One of the, the main thing that I wanted to talk to you about, and, and this, this goes into everything we've been talking about uh, in terms of maintaining on authenticity online, and how to maintain your identity online. And maybe you want to create a new identity online, which we've all done. And one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, how many people in here have ever done online dating? And I mean in any form, not just Match.com. I mean, even people who have hooked up from Craigslist. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's like three hands. You're such liars. Bullshit. Really, anyone who's ever done online dating, ever created an account, Yahoo Personals, MSN Personals, eHarmony, Match, JDate, the Must Love Dog site, whatever that was, <laughs> <laughs> which is a scam, by the way. Um, okay, yeah, sure, that number's really believable. Um, how many of you are married? Okay. Anybody in here married ever do online dating before they were married? See, that actually proves a, a, the statistic that most people don't meet online. Most successful marriages actually are people who met through friends. Uh, I, was, yes. I was in a wedding a month and a half ago where they met on OkCupid. Okay OkCupid? Okay wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. My, sister, my sister's ninth wedding anniversary is today, and she met her husband on Yahoo Personals. Wow, I didn't know so, anyone met from Yahoo Personals. Yeah, yeah, and I met my boyfriend of six years on American singles. So. That's the that's the one that yeah I actually think that one's kind of a scam. Yeah. I'm glad you met somebody there though. I'm glad to know that somebody has met. I signed up with one person. He never emailed me back, and I kind of forgot about it. And then he messaged me, and we ended up hooking up. And it was okay. Well, congratulations. That's nice. They have one customer service guy, by the way. American singles. One. No matter how many times you call American singles, they have one. About three years ago, my friend and I got on there. And he's in the yeah, it's the same guy will always call you. They never answer, they'll call you back. Yeah, well, the same guy will call you back. Anyway, um, the, uh, yeah, let's go forward. Oh, this is about your kind of stuff. Yeah, we can move on a little bit. But um, the, the reason I asked you how many of you have done online dating is because, uh, well, let me first say, did all of you who have ever done it, did you all post your picture? Everyone? No. Okay, everyone who's posted a picture 
for social purposes, not Facebook. I mean for dating or romance. Raise your hand. Uh, very few. Many more have been have done online dating that didn't post your picture. So, have you ever had an ongoing communication with somebody whose picture you haven't seen? Mm -hmm. For romance, for dating? <laughs> <laughs> yes, going on. <laughs> Not romance. <laughs> okay. I'm actually finding it hard to answer these questions because I did online dating through chat forums. Okay. And it wasn't that I was at the chat forums for romantic purposes, but I did meet a few guys that way before I met him. Right. I'm talking about maintaining a profile online strictly yeah. for dating and romantic purposes. You have not done that. No. Right. Okay. So let me ask you one final question. How many people in here have ever had sex online? Any kind of sex? Liars! <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, not a hand. Really? Not even with a boyfriend or girlfriend or a spouse? There she is. I'm kidding. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> she was kidding. She was kidding. Oh, my God. The reason I bring this up is because millions, and I do mean millions, of people just in this country alone have intimate relations with other people online, some only online. And I, I won't lecture you about the dangers of that. I think we all know. And at the, at the risk of, of, of being redundant, because I know at this conference, a lot of us are making the same points, which are essentially common sense points, right? Where we can all nod and say, yeah, I know, I know, it's stupid. You know, I'm not going to talk to somebody without their picture, right? But sometimes you do it, and sometimes you get lost in a moment, or sometimes you're in a, you get lost in a certain point in your life where you find yourself uh, creating identities for yourself online. Maybe it's just one Twitter account. Maybe it's some Mash.com account. Maybe it's somebody you ended up meeting through a chat room. Maybe, you know, a gardening chat room, a film chat room, whatever it is, and you make connections with people online. But it's actually fairly infrequent that you learn, really, who these people are. And I have countless examples of people who have been hurt by these experiences, probably even some people in this room, where uh, myself included over the years, and I don't mean hurt as in dated and brokenhearted, but I mean hurt in some way where you feel like your trust has been violated, or at least that if you consider yourself a person of good judgment, you find, how can I not see that? How did I not realize that that person is kind of a scumbag? or that they were totally lying, or that somebody who has been online for a while suddenly isn't. Or, getting even uh, deeper into it, have you ever had been in a relationship with somebody and you look at their IM list and you don't know everybody who's on their IM list? Or you wonder about the messages that they're getting from people on their Facebook? Or you wonder about the messages they're getting from people on Facebook? You think, does she date him? Why is he talking to her about a back massage? You know, like anybody who smoked a big joint before coming here should probably leave now because I'm getting paranoid. Can I go? Can, can I get the sex online? Yeah. Can I get an STD? If I have sex online? You actually can. <laughs> Right, you're thinking, that's how I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we, let's, let's, let's flip through this because we don't want to, we've only got a couple minutes. This, yeah, this oh, is I'm me. sorry, this is very important. This is very important. Yeah, I was hurt badly uh, through online dating. <laughs> Your uh, profile said you were hot? Well, you said you were asked. <laughs> okay, how many people in the room have dated either one of them? Um, I, I have heard from friends, this is, I'm not sure this has ever happened to me quite this bad, but I have heard uh, many, many stories, not only at my column, but from my friends. This happens a lot. A lot. Yeah, you're nodding? This is happening? Oh, you're just acknowledging. Okay. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just go through a few points because it is really, really important how you maintain yourself online. And being a columnist, and my column is read all over the country. I get mail from all over the country. And in addition to my column, 
having a website where I say almost nothing personal about myself. My column is called Cat's Call. My website is catscall.com. And I have almost nothing personal about myself on there for good reason. I get lots and lots of mail from people asking me personal questions, especially when you're an advice columnist and you talk a lot about dating and relationships and you're not married. So of course you're gonna get a lot of mail, including convict mail, which has art, is illustrated. Yes, I kid you not. Um, but it's not email. It's, I'm not sure what ink they're using, but I didn't want to bring it in. But anyway, and, and then this kind of stuff is scary and it's important, it's because of my presence online. Um, I do tweet, I tweet under my own name, which is just Kat Spector, and I'm somewhat uh, uh, private, even about my tweets. I tweet about my dog sometimes, besides that, nothing about my personal life, even though I get a lot of, that sounds bad, but requests for, to, to, to tweet about like my dating life or my relationship life, which I won't do, because A, it's nobody's business, and B, because I truly believe this stuff comes back to haunt you. Especially if you end up no longer dating somebody that you're really complimentary about online, then you can never go back. Yeah, you can erase it from your tweet, right? But it'll be in the public timeline. So anyway, let's put up these bullet points. And um, these are, of course, uh, facts. I am a big believer in honesty. I say this in my column all the time. And I, I've said this to people I've dated. I say this to my friends. And I say it to all of you. Please, please for the good of mankind and for yourself, be honest online. That does not mean to, uh, to, to, to tell everyone your life story. In fact, please don't do that. Um, but you will see in the fourth bullet point that uh, about sharing intimate details of your life. But it is super, incredibly important to be honest online. And you can all think to yourself, well, yeah, I know. But uh, even in people's most basic Facebook or MySpace profiles, people lie. They lie out the wazoo. They lie about the music they like. They lie about the books they've read, the films they like. There are people who openly lie about their marital status, where they went to college, what their degrees are, their age. Absolutely everything. And people that you think you know actually lie. And it's because peer pressure exists continues long after high school, I think we all know that, right? Which is why everyone wants the, a certain number of followers on Twitter and a certain number of friends on Facebook and they want a certain number of connections on LinkedIn because everybody feels the pressure to be popular, right? Sure. We, we all do to a certain extent. It's somewhat natural because the internet, just like the real world, it is important how many people pay attention to what you say and what you do. If nobody pays any attention to you, you won't be successful. If nobody read my column, I wouldn't be standing here. It's the truth, and um, <laughs> I hope this doesn't keep you from reading it. Uh, second point, if your friends are doing it, you should too. Um, I'm not on Facebook or MySpace, or, or um, I'm on LinkedIn, and I'm on Twitter, and that's it. And I've had more Facebook invites from people I don't know, complete and utter strangers, um, and I, I, I used to feel rude saying no thank you, and uh, but, I'm just not on it. I don't want to maintain another identity online. I do think people stretch themselves too thin, and I think it becomes inauthentic when you're on every possible social media site. And I think the aces in the business, they kind of need to be. But I think the average person does not need to be. Like, I'm on LinkedIn for professional reasons. Yeah, I have some friends that I'm linked with on LinkedIn. I think we all have some friends in our LinkedIn connections. But other than that, they are strictly professional connections. And I only recommend people that I've actually worked with and allow people to recommend me if they've worked with me. Um, I see people on LinkedIn, they are connected. I mean, they, they, where people I know what they do for a living and they meet maybe three people a year and yet they have you know, 247 connections on LinkedIn because they feel that intense pressure. And as Chris Anderson of TED, anybody subscribe to TED, know about TED, the organization published? Okay, now, yeah, one of the coolest things ever created. Yeah, truly. Uh, Chris Anderson wrote a piece uh, about social media and, and networking online. And one of his points was that he would rather be connected to 100 people who actually share his interests, who have common interests, than be connected to 4,000 people who he doesn't know, who he has nothing in common with, and who he'll never con truly connect with. So I, I think that's very important. So point two about if your friends are doing it, you should too. I think you should only be on sites, personally, I think you should only be on sites that actually serve a purpose for you, other than showing off that you know how to use the internet and write your name in a box. 
Because I think that people look uh, you know, kind of cheesy. Does that make sense to anyone but me? I think people look cheesy when you look on every single site, and they're on there. It's like someone who's on every single dating site, but that's more desperate. We can get back to that. Um, of course, assume everything you read is true. Naturally, right? We can all say, yeah, we know, people lie, people lie. Let me say something. Please remember this, because we're all people of common sense. People lie all the time about the most ridiculous things, things that you would never think are even important to somebody else. That's something they feel incredible pressure to lie about. It is, it, it is absolutely mind-blowing, and most things don't surprise me anymore about the way people treat each other. I, I, I wish they would, but they don't surprise me much anymore, except how often people lie. People you know, people you think you know, lovely people, kind, giving, caring people, lie out the ass about the craziest things, and they will do it in a way that you can see. They don't realize it, because you know, a lie is like a web, and they get caught up in it and the littlest things start to blow up, so please be honest online. If you want anyone to take you seriously in your job or in the social world, be honest, even if that means your profile's this big. Uh, share intimate details of your life, absolutely not. I'll speed this up because I know we're basically done. Do not do that. Do not share intimate details of your life with strangers. If you are on Twitter, and you want to share some intimate details, make sure your page is locked. People will find you. It is incredibly easy to find you. I am a super efficient online stalker, and I can tell you that I can find out. I'm a, I impress myself with how good of a searcher I am. Yeah, you've all done it, right? The people you dated, yeah. You look them up because you know, and that's how you learn that they lied, right? Because you can find them on every single old friends, people you used to work with, people who screwed you over, you can go find out what they're up to. It's really, really easy. And if you share intimate details of your life, I guarantee you, somebody will use them against you at some point. Uh, and last point, stupidity rules the internet. Go with it. Well, I think this is true, right? The stupidity in some way does, because I think people are really hungry for attention. Uh, Justin hit this point in the last, uh, the last presentation that there is a certain degree of people wanting attention. Uh, and I, I think people like Jason and Jeff are really good examples of people on Twitter, for example, who I started following them. Well, actually, you and I started following each other fairly recently, but Jason and I were following each other for, for a while. Um, like, I only follow people on Twitter who I think are funny. Um, everyone has a different reason for following people. Uh, I don't actually really follow too many of my friends. I follow complete strangers that I just think are really funny and a few news organizations and a couple celebrities I have a crush on and that's it because there's only so many you can look at at any given moment. But the point is, uh, the things that people will put out there, uh, it, it, it is shockingly uh, sad how much personal information people will put on the internet and they don't realize, they think that they're, that they're not disclosing a lot, but they really are. And I can tell you one thing from writing my column for seven years. Uh, and just living. People are incredibly transparent, and it doesn't matter if it's in the real world or online. It's really easy to see through people if you choose to look, and mostly because people want you to see them. And so the people who share a lot of information about themselves, a tremendous amount of personal or intimate information, they look desperate. And I just want to put that out there because that's never the impression you want to give to the world. And sometimes it's hard to know how other people look at you. But you should know, or your friends should know, maybe you all know this, but amazingly, most people don't, how transparent they are and how they appear to the world. So you're always safer sharing less and sharing more. So anyway, that's my spiel. Uh, any questions from anyone? For either, any of us? Like that. You guys are done. Let's go. You know, we had this other section about just uh, about the marketing side of you, you know, did, but you sat down. Marketing. I sat down, and I mean, I think we could probably sum it up in one in one sentence or so, which is like authenticity is also a terrific internal policeman if you're in that kind of role. And if you listen to that that policeman voice, then it serves it very well. So that's you know, five slides on a twenty bullet point where the material condensed into a uh, a, a, a ten second snippet. Yes, this was really very well prepared before we got here, and then it's still got here. Yeah, the cards went everywhere. So, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to us.